Hi everyone, Debbie again. Um, I wanted to share, I keep kicking my tripod, I really apologize, but it's in an awkward place. I can't, because of um, where my desk and everything sits, I can't get it behind me. Um, so I'm, I keep kicking it because it's right beside my chair. Anyway, I apologize for that. Um, I, oh, there we go again. <laughs> All right, we're still in focus. All right, um, I just wanted to share another page that I finished, a sort of a mixed media scrapbook layout, and um, it's a photo of my granddaughter Surrey, and I loved the photo because it was very vintage looking. It it almost had, it almost looked like it had like a, a cloud or a mist in the photo. And so I wanted to do a scrapbook layout, and what I did was um, I get the Australian Scrapbook Ideas magazine, and they oftentimes will give you something free um, in with the magazine. Uh, one time I got paper and stamps, and then... Um, this time it came with uh, Hot Off the Press Roses in Harmony paper pack. And I really like the paper. Uh, the, the only complaint I have about the paper that comes in these is um, they're actually lightweight paper. Well, not as lightweight as copy paper, but almost. Um, rather than, you know, the heavier cardstock. And it's not double-sided, so... Um, it came with pages of tags, two of those, and then um, just A4 size sheets, which was another issue because if you wanted to use one whole piece on a 12 by 12 layout, it makes it kind of difficult. So what I ended up doing is using this sheet and this sheet. And I put the floral pattern at the top as far as it would go on the page and then put the green at the bottom. Uh, then I tore the edges out in in random places and um, bef I, when I glued the background paper on my cardstock I left it loose under here and then I just took some of the uh, music note paper distress the edges with my distress tool and then put some vintage photo ink around the edges and then slipped it under and some of them I wrinkled up when I put under there uh, and some of them I just left flat and then uh, the background I sp sprayed really really lightly without a mask or anything um, this glimmer mist and it is burnt red and then I came in with this stencil, which is a Crafter's Workshop st stencil, and it is called, um, oh, where is it? Uh, it is called Dots All Around. Sorry about that. Dots All Around. And I use that here, here and up in this corner and there is some under here but it obviously doesn't show and then um, after that was dry I came in with my crafters workshop stencil uh, mini art is and uh, on the green dots it was texture paste mixed with green a uh, sort of a dark olive green um, acrylic paint and then when I put, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have it here, here, and here. I use this Mini Art Is stamp, or uh, stencil, and I mix some rose-colored paint, acrylic paint, with my texture paste and put that on. And then I took, this is a Dusty Attic uh, bird cage, and I painted it rose, and then I came back in with uh, white acrylic paint with a dry brush and just brushed over it so it looks like some of the paint has chipped off, and then I came back in and added a little bit darker white in some places. 
Uh, the butterflies were cut from the paper, and as I said before, the paper is very lightweight, so what I did is I just put a tiny bit of double-sided tape on the back and stuck it to, a, um, to my metal ruler, actually. Uh, I did it with both butterflies and with this tag, and then I covered the whole butterfly with glossy accents, and then on the tag, I don't know if you can tell... Um, all I did is I went over the love and in the intricate lace design on the tag with the glossy accent so it looks like it's um, embossed on there and um, once this was dry uh, I'll have to admit it curled all up but what I did is I just gently started shaping it into the shape I wanted and it's staying that way so it worked out really well and it gave it some body and uh, made it a little sturdier. Um, then uh, another paper that I just brought into it to use was um, this uh, timely point of view from a proper gentleman collection graphic 45 and the only thing I took from that is I cut out this, um, it was a pocket watch, but I just cut the top of it off and put it on a piece of chipboard and used it as a decorative element in there. And then um, all of my flowers are handmade, uh, except for these tiny little roses, but I, I'm teaching myself to crochet, which is quite funny when you watch me do it but I crocheted the the little flowers and I crocheted the center that I used for that flower and I'm actually loving it because um, when you buy the crocheted flowers you don't get very many in a pack or at least I haven't found any here in Australia possibly in the US you would get more <clears throat> excuse me and so I decided to do my own, and I'm actually quite happy with them. I've tried different um, weights of yarn. This is what I actually used on these. Um, it didn't say on the label what weight it is, but it's a real thin cotton yarn, and I actually prefer the cotton to the acrylic and, and the thinner ones because you get a nicer, tighter uh, crochet out of it. Um... These leaves were a Martha Stewart sort of a, a floral spray uh, punch. This is a Spellbinders foliage dye. Um, let's see, that was out of the collection. I had a little butterfly, a sparkly butterfly brad in my um, stash, so I used that. Then this heart. Uh, was actually, if you can believe it, I still have these. Um, I don't know if you remember the tiny little Sizzix. Um, they first came out with the big square one, and you had the big dies, and you pulled the handle down. I still have that, believe it or not, and I still have some dies. And after that, they came out with a little mini one that you could take with you, and it came out with these little Sizzlets dies. Um, so these were fr from my original machine, and I still use that all the time, too, um, along with my Cricut and my Cuddlebug and all kinds of different old tools that I still have and I still use. I can't seem to let them go. But anyway, um, I cut out these two hearts out of felt, white felt, and then I sprayed them with this, but I didn't... I knew it was going to take a lot of this to actually saturate it, so I sprayed some in a little Tupperware container, and then I sprayed a bunch of water in it, and I just kept working it and working it until I got it worked into the felt. Um, and just let me give you a clue if you haven't ever used felt before. Don't dry it with your heat gun, or if you do, do it until it's still damp but not dry because it will burn it um, because I did that with one of the layers and had to do it over. Um, so that was my heart and I used some of this um, this yarn and I used some jute twine and I just 
looped it around and carried it around uh, and glued it down very lightly in some places. That was from the paper collection. I'm trying to see what else is on here. Oh, this, this netting here, this, I, I actually wanted some drywall tape and I haven't gone to get any yet. So, uh, if you ever get fruit that has the net on it, um, just keep it because you can use it for this kind of thing. Uh, what I did was I just cut a piece out of it and um, I covered it with um, gesso and then I came back, back in because it was yellow came back in with some um, pale pale pink paint and painted over the top of it um, and then put it on my background so that worked really well uh, I put a little bit of white paint uh, around the edge of the photo uh, to make it more vintage than it already was and I distressed I used the dark red paper and distressed the edges and I have it on um, chipboard so that it gives it more body and then it put the photo on top of that um, these little pearl centers come from the craft queen store and I love them. They have that size and that size, the little tiny one. And um, I love using them on these tiny flowers for the centers. And uh, I think that's it. But I just wanted to share that with you because I was real happy with that layout. And I'm going to do a video, not on crochet. <laughs> You'll be happy to hear. Uh, because you would be bored out of your mind because I'm so slow and not very good at it. Uh, but on these flowers, because um, I saw uh, I saw an actual step-by-step -step of it. It's not my original idea. Um, I saw a step-by-step -step of it uh, on somebody's blog. And um, it was a long time ago, and I thought I would actually try it. And it turned out really well. I did it with the organza, the tool... And here's another organza. This one's beautiful, this color. And uh, it really turned out nice. So um, I'm going to do a real quick tutorial so that you know how I made those. And you can do various centers on them. Like this one, um, you can pull these uh, stems. I have. I got these at the dollar store. I'm sure they have them everywhere, but... Of these little stamens and um, I just I put six of them together and folded them in half which gave me 12 and just stuck it through the crocheted flower and then through the flower at the back um, but you can put them on without the crocheted flower I just added that uh, just to give it a little bit more dimension so that was it thanks for watching bye